So we are back in Kentish Town. 2.0. There you go. That was once a pub. Well, better go. Fresh as we are in a minute. Oh, well, well, look at this. Oh, is this? Oh, it's a nice big building. I used to work in that. John Lennon, Bob Dylan, Elvis. Most famous nude swing baths. Little side shoot while we're here. So as I'm passing, I can't resist having a bit of a look in the base gallery. I can resist. Uh, let's get warmed up. Strictly speaking, we are doing Kentish Town today. But to make a start, we're over here in Camden. Kentish Town, of course, is in Camden, but this is more Camden Camden than Kentish Town Camden. Confused? Aren't we all? So what we have here is the London Irish Centre. Camden Square, London Irish Centre. In case you were ever wondering where it was, where's the flag? Here she goes. Of course, Camden Square is famous for much more than just the London Irish Centre. It's a very nice part of town and also well known for a certain young songstress who used to live in the area and became extremely popular in her younger years for a most remarkable singing voice and here we have a bit of a tribute to the lady herself incredible Amy Winehouse so here we can see a tribute marking her area yeah tribute to Amy Winehouse Pigeons always wait here. Last time I was here, there was pigeons here. I think they get fed. So we can have a little look around Camden Square here. It's a nice little spot. Especially on a day like this. Gonna hang a quick left here. And see if we can't get across the road. Right, first stop. So this part of Camden, Kentish Town, a lot of these areas, they don't have a lot in the way of big parks actually. This is probably it in this area. This is called Cantalow's Gardens, that's right. Here's a nice little bit of green space, but not particularly big, you know? Play area bit of a football pitch back there, the usual gym, stuff like that. So we'll have a quick look around, give you a flavour of it. Very small. All right. Good boy. Skate park, that's the other thing. It's a pretty cool one actually. Of all the ones we've seen, this one's pretty decent. Pretty cool. That is the size of the park. It's tiny. So, but I can use this as a way in and go up to the next spot, just up the road. Let's tell you about this place. So guess what we've got here? Yes, it's another closed pub. Good pub too, this was. It was one of those that played a lot of old bands and had some great rock music back in the day. Classic sort of Camden rock music pub, but it's called the Unicorn. Like a lot of them, it's fallen by the wayside. The usual up in prices, lack of customers, that sort of thing. But I've been in there several times and they used to have a room at the back there uh, dedicated to live bands and live music. All gone now. Another one bites the dust. Carrying our story on of British pub culture and how it's changed and failing and moving on. It's all different. And so it is. While we're at it here by the unicorn, we can go down this alley. Let's see if it's still the same because, yeah, well, it's a different name, but this is another rehearsal studio place where I used to use on occasion. Met one of my favorite drummers in there. Um, so yeah, there's rehearsal rooms in there. The Unicorn, which is no more. Give it, what, a year, two years, three years? That'll be flat. Why Kentish Town 2? Well, we'll come to that. I'll explain a bit later. But there's a reason why we're here for a second visit. In summary, I've lived in Kentish Town twice. 
one after another. We were here once, had to move, found a second place, stayed in the area. Well, this is a really nice little street. Called Torriano Cottages. It's not one of those streets you would know about or ever drive down or go down unless you know the area. And I do. So here I am. It's a lovely little spot there. Separate little village all to itself. <sighs> Yeah, it's a nice, nice little area and there's a famous, famous person lives there and there's a famous person lives opposite. This place is full of them. Because we're going to start right at the top, I've just decided. So we're going to head up to the top of Leighton Road and see what's up there. Right, I think I've just found a little estate to explore. Just a bit of a back alley. Not the most exciting of estates, but worth a quick look. You never know. Right, just gonna cross Leighton Road here. Go up this hill. In you go. Grey building, now a shop. Guess what that was? Well, this year's shop was once a pub. Probably the Torriana. This is Brecknock Road. <clears throat> and this side, NW5, Kentish Town, Camden. Camden Borough. That side, N7 which is an Islington postcode. So we've got a border road, Islington and Camden. So you've got Tuffnell Park over there. You've got Camden and Kentish Town this side. But while we're here, let's show you something special on that side. Right, I have been past this place, I don't know how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. If you are from an era when you remember the great comedy TV <laughs> programs, you might remember things like Spaced, the TV programme. Yep, this is the house coming up. Launched Simon Pegg, Korea, and uh, Jessica Hines, that's it. Marsha. Yeah, so this is where Tim, Daisy, Mike and the gang all lived and played. Great series. Well, better go. Fresh as be open a minute. Time to do the weekly shop. <laughs> One of my favourite lines. Right, well I suppose we'd better leave Islington and get over to Camden, Kentish Town, where we're supposed to be. Let's do one. Let's go right. Let's wing it. So why are we here in NW5 again? Well, it's kind of a two-part story. I used to live here once, as we know, in the last episode, I was over on Grafton Roadside in that big three-bedroom terrace house. That was really nice. And then things changed, and uh, we ended up over this side of Kentish Town. It's another great place, but it's a bit weird that you move from one place, like, within a mile to another place. But there's a lot of good reasons for it, and I'm glad I did it. It was a good result in the end. This road was used in the Nick Hornby film about a boy, if you remember that, with, uh, with Hugh Grant. And it was filmed somewhere, or some of it was filmed, some of the scenes on this road, which I didn't appreciate at the time. I was living in the area. Turns out, I've recently found out that it was filmed on this road. Now this road is quite long, it goes down the end there, it goes up this hill, and it goes across the other side, so it could have been anywhere. So if any of you want to watch that film again, or if you ever do watch it again, you might be able to recognise some of these scenes from around here. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of filming going on in this area. But not only that, you might remember the hit TV show Fleabag. That was filmed here too. Because the star, what's her name? Phoebe Waller Bridge. She's also from the area. So yeah, it's a popular little spot this. Right. We all mine a van. <laughs> oh, as you know I'm not into churches, but we got St. Bennett's. Looks huge. Let's go on the back, down the cobbles. Let's see what this is. Well, 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 look at this. How quaint. A classic news street. How lovely. Oh, what a great place to live. It's really nice. With the best pub in the area, 
right on the corner. The pineapple. Which feels a little bit like I'm almost riding every single street in Kentish Town at the moment. <laughs> Maybe I should do that as a challenge. What do you think? Here, this is like one of the best spots in NW5 to live, I would say. What was that? There's an alley I have to check out. What is this? Wow, what about you? Never been here before. What is this? See, the things you find. I wonder where it comes out. Oh, I'll have to go with that exit in a minute. Right, wow. Well, that's new. Right, let's see what's out this way. <laughs> oh, I know this bit. Well, well, well. I never knew there was a way in or out there. Right, we'll be back here a bit later. <laughs> You'll find out why then. In the meantime, let's head south. I've got some more news for you, a bit more information. Full of it today. The sun's come out, I'm warming up. I'm starting to feel a bit better. Maybe I'm half lizard, I don't know, but <laughs> when the sun comes out, I start feeling better. Less exciting trivia for you. This is Leighton Road. I'm on the south side of Leighton Road, which is behind me, that side. All the street names were named after Christchurch, Oxford. You've got names like Islip, Peckwater, Caversham, and Gaysford. And there's an estate back there we're going to have a look at in a bit. That's the Peckwater estate. And on the north side, which is behind me now, up that way, all the street names there are named after St John's College, Cambridge. So you've got Oxford down there, Cambridge that side. And they are names like Lady Margaret, Burley, College Lane, amongst others. So Oxford and Cambridge, either side of Leighton Road. All right, let's dive down here, Bartholomew Road. Uh, if only you knew the irony of me riding down here now. <laughs> so funny. What can I say? Oh, it's a nice big building. I used to work in that. And that's all I'll say on the matter. This is <laughs> Osney Crescent. And this is another one of those streets that was used for the filming of About a Boy. And just here we've got the massive and very impressive St Luke's Church. I don't really do churches, but this is a big one. If you're an Only Fools and Horses fan, apparently there was a scene here used for filming uh, for what, Damien's christening, I think, something like that. Because in the area, but in the area also lived Roger Lloyd Pack. Now Roger Lloyd Pack played Trigger. Trigger, he's not with us anymore sadly, but great character was Trigger. I used to use one of Trigger's quotes for my last bicycle, not this one. My last one had so many parts changed on it. Everything except the frame, I mean everything. So basically my last bike was Trigger's bike. Yeah, if you get that reference, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> speed over speed bumps, that's what you want. Right, we're about to hit the high street. So there's a pub that's still open, the Abbey. Met somebody fun in there once. So there's a little alleyway here I just spotted, which I'm gonna take, which is quite interesting. There used to be a little company here on the left that I used to deal with. They've gone now, I think, in one of these. You've got a few little workshops and things on the left, on the right, sorry. This here all seems to be closed up at the moment. And then you've got some nice houses, again, industrial oh, places that I'd love to live. I just spotted something earlier on. Let's have a quick look on the wall here, because that's pretty cool. <laughs> John Lennon, Bob Dylan, Elvis, Hendrix. Oh God, who's that? Ringo? Could be. So just a quick update. Last time we were here, we mentioned Kentish Town South tube station, which closed due to lack of funding. But, I've since learned that it was closed in, get the date right, 1924 due to problems with the elevators 
and it never reopened again. Yeah, we had a look down here last week, but we can have a, another quick look at, at Kelly Street because it's so nice and the sun's out. <sighs> look at those colours. It's nice when they do this, isn't it? Major character. It's nice when they insist on having houses painted in a certain colour style. Gives it some character. Well, we're on the west side of, of Kentish Town, what I call the west side of Kentish Town. I sort of using the high street as like a divider marker with west side and east side. We're at the bottom end of Grafton Road, where I used to live, which is dead ahead. And this is the St Pancras Public Baths and Public Hall. Lovely old building. And on the back side of this used to be a gym I used to use, which is just up there. That used to be my gym when I was on living on that road, Grafton Road. That's a pub I used to go to. Yeah. This road, this little lane is called Angler's Lane. You can see it there, look. Now, why is it called Angler's Lane? History, <laughs> my strong point, <laughs> not. But I do know a little bit about this because uh, having lived around here for such a long time, you do kind of pick things up. And one of London's most famous subterranean rivers which gives the impression that London's got lots of subterranean rivers, and it probably has. So one of them passes through here, and it goes from Hampstead Heath Ponds and Highgate Ponds. They come together at some point, and they come together and they flow underneath here, underneath Kentish Town. They carry on down through King's Cross, Farringdon, Holborn. Well, this subterranean river used to be obviously open. It was an open river many, many, many years back. and. Now it runs completely underground all the way down to the Thames. Runs four miles underground and comes out in an opening by the Thames somewhere. But it's possible, I've heard it said, that it used to run open somewhere in this area, possibly underneath up here, up Angler's Lane, and possibly people used to fish in it. It was that big. Yep. And maybe that's why it's called Angler's Lane. So we're going to take Angler's Lane now and we're going to pop out onto the high street and have a closer look at that. Right, so Angler's Lane, let's take it. And if you're wondering if the River Fleet has anything to do with the name Fleet Street, well yes it does. Fleet Street was actually named after this river, the River Fleet, which I suspect is somewhere underneath me here. Possibly under here, running under there, who knows. But yeah, the River Fleet, one of London's biggest subterranean rivers. The high street has got things like Ponacea, Earth Natural Foods, Organic Shops, Gales, a fancy bakery. Oh, <laughs> this place. See that? Rio's Relaxation Spa and Swimming Pool. Jacuzzi, Sauna, Steam Room, Plunge Pool. Well, Rio's is famously one of London's most famous nude swing baths. That's right. It's very famous in this area, and probably all over London. If you're in that scene, the famous nude swimming baths. Burned down a few years ago too, but they obviously rebuilt it, it's that popular. I always do wonder, how does a swimming bath burn down? All right, so as well as things like fancy organic food stores, very expensive bakeries, nude swimming baths. <laughs> what else have we got on this? Upmarket High Street, let's have a look. Neighbourhood Organic, the Bengal Lancer, quite a famous curry place. Cos Hobbs, super expensive bakery. All right, let's keep going. Crazy scooter riders, they're everywhere. The Parakeet, well, that's a new name. That was an old pub before. It's called the Oxford, aha. Two things here. I've just realised. I literally just put that together. That pub, now called the Parakeet, that was called the Oxford during my time. Which of course ties in with our Oxford streets in the area. And that is what? Islip Street. Well, well. You learn something every day. Now, a local institution, one of these, uh, probably the last of its kind of shops like this, BS Home Care. You go in there, most people know it as Aladdin's Cave because 
there's nothing you can't get in there to do with home and garden and that sort of thing it's one of those places where you ask the guy have you got this <laughs> because there's no point you looking for it he will lead you to a little corner somewhere and a shelf somewhere absolutely crammed full of everything and he will put his hand straight on it whatever it is you're looking for this place is great fun I wonder if I can just poke the camera just inside the door might not be able to see much but we'll try it there you go that's all I can get it's brilliant all right carry on up the high street so quiet this time of day because it's in the week and it's daytime everybody's in the office it's dead quiet here so we're just here by the main crossroads in Kentish town right now it's got this coach station thing with a flower stall and coffee shop and uh, it's a really nice little spot anyway but I want to talk about the assembly house just there there's a grade 2 listed building so it's been there I don't, I don't know when it's been there the 1800s I suppose long long time but it's protected now and where did it get its name from well I was told when I was living here that the area in the 17th and 18th century all around surrounding area was really quite rough okay, it was a rough spot and quite dangerous so people if they had to travel particularly across the heath or to somewhere else they would come and they would gather here at the assembly house or the assembly rooms sometimes called so they would all collect together and travel as a group so they could protect themselves if um, if they were robbed or attacked and I also hear that there were vigilante groups that would get together to protect people as well. So yeah, it's got quite a bit of history to it, the old assembly house. Well, that's the end of part one. Come back next week for part two. And if you like this sort of content, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. It'll really help the channel grow and I can continue to make more videos for you. Thanks a lot. Die